In a recent video, we took a look at the AMD FX 8350 just to see if we could still game on it. You guys love that video so much that we thought we'd come back and take a look at the other chips that we've got and see if we can game on them too. So the CPUs that we've got here today are from AMD and they are from the FX range. That means that they're all AM3 Plus socket chips and they were all released roughly about the same time. The chips we have are a four core, six core and an eight core. So we've got a bit of a diversity across the whole range. And the first one is the AMD FX4300. It is a four core, four thread processor, according to AMD, with a base clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz and a TDP of just 95 watts. The second is the AMD FX6100. Now this would have been a more common processor at the time when six cores were really coming into their own. And it is a six core, six thread processor with a base clock speed of 3.3 gigahertz. Just like the 4300, it also has a TDP of 95 watts. The last CPU that we've got here is obviously the AMD FX8350. Now we've included this one back onto the testing because we wanna see how it compares to the others. It is an eight core, eight thread processor with a base clock speed of four gigahertz. And unlike the others, it has a TDP of 125. Now from our last video, we know that the 8350 can actually game, particularly if it's paired with a pretty decent GPU. Now when it comes to testing here on our channel, we're generally only interested in the gaming results. But for these ones, we did do some synthetic and productivity benchmarks just to see what the generational change looks like. The benchmark that we ran was Cinebench R23. And when it comes to the single core score, we pretty much got the expected results. All three FX chips sit way down at the bottom of the chart compared to all the more modern CPUs. But what is interesting there is how the FX4300 outperforms the FX6100. Now this is probably down to its higher clock speeds, but let's take a look at the multi-core to see if anything changes there. In the multi-core test, we pretty much got the same results. All of the FX processors sit down at the bottom compared to its more modern generations. But in this instance, the FX8350 with its higher clock speeds and more cores and threads, nearly doubles the performance of the others. Still, just like the single core test though, the FX 4300 slightly outperforms the 6100, which should suggest that it's probably the better of the two. But do those productivity benchmarks translate into gaming? Now we do know from the comments of the last video that you guys wanted us to test the 8350 with a stronger graphics card than the GTX 1660 Super. So for these tests, we actually pulled out our RX 6600. Now this is a much newer card. It's a lot more powerful than the 1660 Super, and it should be more than enough for all of these CPUs. But let's take a look at some of those benchmarks and then we'll discuss the results.
So as you can see from those benchmarks, all of these CPUs will actually game when paired with a modern graphics card. The experience is up and down depending on which one you're using. Obviously from all the results you've seen, the 8350 is a bit of a powerhouse, but let's take a look at how they compare together. Up first we have Cyberpunk 2077, probably the most demanding game of all the games we tested and it really showed within the results. With the FX 4300 managing to get an average FPS of just 23 and the FX 6100 falling behind it to just 20 FPS, neither CPU gave a great playing experience. The FX 8350 though was a different story, managing to get an average of 48 FPS which meant the game was actually playable. Horizon Zero Dawn continued to show how demanding it could be for all three FX CPUs and even though all three CPUs managed to get 30 FPS and up, there were more than just performance issues. On all three of these CPUs the sound during gameplay would cut in and out which really took away from the experience. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a new title we've added to our test suite. It's a little older than the other games, but it can be quite testing even today. The FX 4300 managed to get an average of 41 frames per second in this game, and the results only got better from there. You could actually play through this game on any of these FX CPUs, and with a little customization in the settings, it could be a great playing experience. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we saw results pretty close to Horizon Zero Dawn, but this time without any sound issues. This meant that the game was quite playable with all three CPUs and could easily be improved with some tweaking to the quality settings. The FX 4300 scored the lowest again with an average of just 35 frames per second, increasing gradually up the stack to 53 with the FX 8350. Now WRC 8 is not the most demanding game, but we like to include it to show some variety in the types of games. Visually the game looks stunning and on all three FX CPUs you will get a great playing experience. The lowest scoring was the FX 4300, but it still managed to get an average FPS of over 60, rising to 82 when moving up to the FX 8350. So there we have it, we can actually game on an AMD FX CPU. Obviously the FX 8350 will give you the best experience all round, particularly when it comes to those newer titles, but it doesn't mean that you can't play anything. The other two CPUs, particularly the 6100 when in gaming, performs pretty well, and it would actually perform pretty well on those esports and older titles. If that's all you want to play and you can get these cheap enough, then why not? Pick one up and just start the game. Let us know in the comments if you're still using one of these CPUs and what types of games are you playing? Are you ready to upgrade now or is it still doing you fine? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and drop this video a like if you like this kind of content and we'll catch you in the next one.